Hey there. Uh, I wanted to put together a little video on um, inventory management in games and actually a system that you can implement in your own game that will really streamline your ability to create features uh, that normally would require a lot of UI code and layout and design. Um, but there's, there's basically a really simple set of principles you can use that'll cover an enormous amount of different things that you might want your interfaces to do. Um, and basically it is a drag and drop inventory system at heart. Um, so a few years ago I came across this uh, code pen by Eric Eastwood. It's actually by Captain Anonymous, but I think some of the art is by Eric Eastwood. And this uh, drag and drop system is, is very simple. You can just drag items around and they just get moved on the grid and that's all fine and dandy right but what uh, what happened was I started thinking about this this type of system and, and drag and drop and I wanted to create a game where I didn't have to worry about the user interface and didn't have to worry about constantly creating new ways of handling this drag and drop action and that drag and drop action and so I did a little bit of digging here and you can see here that We've got a few different uh, we've got a few different regions. This is like the default inventory, and I've got some I don't even know was that blackberries? Who knows? Meat, carrots, sword, axes. Uh, we got a chest. We can put anything into the chest. We can take anything out of the chest. Uh, we've got a furnace. We can't just put whatever we want in the furnace. Those things get rejected. But I could put a meat in the furnace. That's fine. Uh, I don't think I can put an axe in the furnace. Nope. Down here, only enchanted weapons that are not an axe. So that appears to be this and maybe this bow. So I could drag the sword in, the bow, but I can't dra drag the enchanted axe or the regular axe or the meat. None of those things work. So what's happening here behind the scenes is that this is actually using a blacklist and a whitelist. And uh, the blacklist, uh, excuse me, actually, let's start with the whitelist. The whitelist is telling you what types of items can we put in this UI slot, uh, what categories. And so those categories can be as broad or as narrow as you want. You could have, for example, a category called food. You could have a subcategory called meat or maybe a subcategory called cookable. Um, if, you're, if you're into component-based design, you can definitely subdivide uh, things as much as you'd like. And then you can make it so that your different UI panels utilize different whitelists. So in the case of the furnace, maybe this only accepts uh, items of type cookable, or maybe items of type smeltable, and so you could drag those things into the furnace. Uh, the game could do some things, you know, 20 second timer, a little, a little bar appears and it cooks your stuff and then it comes out cooked, changes Sprite, all that stuff. You can bring it back to your inventory. Um, so the whitelist is a way of narrowing down what types of items can I drag into a particular UI slot. So then you have a blacklist in addition to that and that is for cases where you have a special requirement or a special rule. Um, so down here, he's got only enchanted weapons that are not an ax, which doesn't even really make a lot of sense. But maybe a better use case is that you've got whitelisted armor and weapons that you can put in here, but blacklisted the damaged tag. So any armor or weapon that becomes damaged, you apply your damaged tag to it, and then you can no longer put that into this uh, little, uh, these UI slots. So the combination of the whitelist and the blacklist is broadly applicable to almost any drag and drop interaction you would ever want to produce for any system that you could use drag and drop with. And so I'm going to show you a few examples. So if we look at Minecraft crafting, this is an obvious example. Uh, in Minecraft, you have a little three by three grid and you have to drag the appropriate items into the grid in the appropriate configuration, click the button, and then out comes uh, your sticks or whatever. And so 
This is used all over the place for all kinds of things. And the position of these elements really matter. Now in this case, you can just drag things to and from, and there's no real restrictions on what you can put in here. However, if you look at the Minecraft enchanting interface, uh, as I recall, you have to use different gemstones. And so the enchanting interface allows you to drag things in, but only if they're gemstones. So that would be a case where the whitelist has the flag gemstone. Uh, if you look at the World of Warcraft auction house, this doesn't expressly use drag and drop, but it does use this um, icon slot type thing. So this actually could be the drag and drop container with drag and drop items with the drag and drop functionality disabled. So again, you're able to reuse that drag and drop component that you've designed in a multitude of different ways. Uh, the Guild Wars 1 skill bar is a great example. You can do this with any type of skill bar. Uh, and World of Warcraft also does a great job of this, where you can drag not only your character's abilities onto your hotbar, but also consumable inventory items and quest items and I don't even know what else. Mounts? Who knows? Uh, same thing is present here in Guild Wars, where you can drag and drop uh, skills from up here. This is a skill list. You can grab these guys and drag them into your skill slots. And finally, it goes beyond just inventory management as well. Um, you could get into management of other types of entities. For example, this is the XCOM interface. And I don't recall if this is actually drag and drop, um, but you could imagine very easily that this could be drag and drop. You could drag this row for uh, Jose Big Shot Hernandez and drag him into your party to basically equip him into your party. Uh, and then, you know, drag Menace out if you want. Um, and I think this particular interface, this is actually squads on the left, characters on the right. But you could imagine if this was characters uh, detailing your current party, you know, it'd be very easy to convert this into a drag and drop interface. So I think that this system really allows you to do a whole lot with relatively little amount of code because basically for all of your user interactions where you would be moving collections of items or collections of entities from one place to another, which if you think about it, that's how, you know, a ton of, a, a huge portion of your game code works. Um, this type of user interface can really uh, expedite your speed of development and allow you to really get stuff done. So hope you enjoyed the video and thank you very much for watching. Take care.